So thank you and uh, thank you for joining us this morning for cars and trucks. So uh, yeah, first my disclosures. And uh, well, I want to point just to a very simple idea. And the very simple idea we are talking in this meeting is to have an engineered cell recognizing a specific antigen, meaning a specific cell. That's fine, but that's not the biology of a, at least of a solid cancer. So in a solid cancer, we have a really heterogeneous uh, mixture of different cells with different biology. And even though there is additionally stroma that we have to target as well. So uh, how do we deal that with uh, animal models? So here is an animal model we, we very much like. This is an immune competent mouse. And uh, we install a cancer that is in this case a pancreatic cancer into the pancreas of that mouse. So that is a marine pancreatic cancer and that does express or lacks the antigen CAA. The antigen, carcinoembryonic antigen, is a human antigen. So the mouse is transgenic for CAA, meaning the mouse does express CAA in the healthy tissue, gut and lung, because CAA is under control of the human promoter in that mouse. So fully immune competent, tolerant to the antigen, obtains installation of the cancer into, autotopically into the pancreas. And after having established that pancreatic cancer, that takes 10 days, 15 days and more, we transfer CAR T cells recognizing the antigen or have a control uh, CAR on top of it. So how does the mouse look like here? It's a wild type mouse, no CAA. This is CAA expressed in the large and small intestine and in the lung. And remarkably, the CAA is expressed at the luminal side, not to the internal side. Strictly polarized expression at the luminal side. And we have CAA in the serum, of course, like in human. So now, installing the cancer, this is a CAA positive pancreatic cancer in the can pancreas. So it grows up to a certain size. Here we do see it. We see a luciferase signal coming up day 17, day 24. This is a, a, a C2 in the, in the abdomen and grows up day 70, fills up the abdomen till day 24 and increase in serum CA. We can use increase in serum CA as a marker for growth of this pancreatic cancer. Now, that is day 10 tumor, tumor imaging here, day 10 tumor, day zero of treatment. We go in now with anti-CAA, CAR T cell, second generation 28 zeta. So the lights of the tumor is going off, stay off, here's one relapse. We almost see relapses, I have to say. But in that frequency of roughly one of 10 mice relapse. But the other mice are cured, lifelong for the mice is one shot of core T cells. And the T cells accumulate in the side of tumor and stay there for a long, long time. Well, the healthy tissue is not affected. Although there is some accumulation of T cells in the gut and in the lung, but there is no destruction of the gut or the stomach and there is no colitis, no weight loss, nothing. So it seems to be safe indeed. And these mice that are cured have a long-lasting memory. And after 100 days of treatment, we challenge these mice at the right side with a positive tumor and the left side with a negative tumor again. So uh, the right side tumor is rejected and the left side tumor, negative for the antigen, uh, grows. Meaning there is an antigen-specific memory long time, after one shot of CAR T cells. So, that was a tumor initiated by transplantation of a homogeneous cell line. As I said at the beginning, that's not the physiological situation of a clinical tumor. So the situation is heterogeneous. And how to deal with that? So we have some cells expressing CA, but the other do not. And the idea is to go in with an anti-CA car uh, recognizing these yellow cells here 
and to initiate a, a secondary immune response by the innate immune system. To attract and activate these innate cells to the tumor lesion, and that can be done by I12. So I12 is physiologically not expressed by CAR T cells. So we like to engineer CAR T cells with an inducible I12 that is only induced when the CAR is recognizing the target cell. So only in, within that lesion, I12 is produced, released, and it should activate, attract, activate innate cells, and the innate cells should destroy the gray cells, the antigen negative cells. That is the idea. So how to do that? These are the constructs for the CAR, a second construct driven by the end fed minimal promoter for the I12. I12 is a heterodimer, so we made a monomer of that, uh, linking both parts together. And here we see the increase in I12 with increasing amounts of antigen or antigen positive cells and antigen negative cells. Now I12 is released, we have an increase in I and gamma, but the cytolytic activity remains the same, and that's known so far. So how is the switch on now? So this is an assay, not an anti-tumor assay, it's just a readout for switching on or switching off. Here we have mice, again, immune-competent mice. That's very important. Immune-competent mice challenged with the antigen-positive cancer cells. T cells without any car, so these mice will, uh, will have a growth of tumors. And we have a T cells with a car, this tumor outgrowth is somehow delayed, and the T cells with inducible I12, uh, there is a reduction in outgrowth. I'm sorry for that, but the pointer does not really work. So uh, that is E. So the CAR T cells control the antigen positive cancer cells. That's what say it's not earth shaking. They will do it anyhow. But now, taking antigen negative tumor cells, and these same situation as in number C, T cells with CAR and inducible I12, nothing happens. Antigen negative one will grow up. Why is that? The CAR T cells are not induced. There is no antigen not in use to, to produce I12. But when we have some antigen positive cells mixed in the antigen negative cell population, and the positive cells irradiate it so they do not grow out, just as a stimulator, the antigen negative outgrowth is suppressed. So we need these stimulator cells in order to induce a reaction against the negative cells. And that is indeed due to I12 because T CAR T cells plus stimulator without I12 do not control the negative outgrowth of these cells. And that can be done with constitutive I12 as well. So we do not need the direct killing of the CAR T cells. It's I12 is doing the job. So the system works, it means it switches on by a CAR T cell, and how does it work in a, in, in a real mouse? So this block here is, is the same mouse. We start at the right side with antigen positive cells, grow up to a certain size, and these antigen positive are mixed with antigen negative. You see it on the bottom line. They are mixed on the right side with a negative one. And on the left side, there are only negative cancer cells. And these negative cancer cells grow to a certain size as well. Let's go to this block on the light, left side. So with the CAR T cells plus inducible I12, what happens to the positive, antigen positive cancer cells? So the positive cancer cells are controlled. And then the same tumor, the negative cells are controlled as well but not at the contralateral sites where the, only the negative tumor cells are growing. Meaning the negative cells are controlled in the mixed tumor, but not in the homogeneous negative tumor. So there is not a systemic anti-tumor response, it's a local anti-tumor response against the negative tumor cells. And that is due to I12 because the same car without I12 do not control the negative tumor cells in the mixed tumor, 
and it's due to the car initiation because an unrelevant car plus I-12 do, do not do the job. So do we have another pointer? So it's, but anyhow, sorry for that. So and the control of the negative tumor cells is mediated by indeed innate immune cells. And these cells that are doing the job as macrophages, we see it here in the histogram, we can deplete these macrophages, give them back, and indeed when we deplete the macrophages, the tumor is growing up, and when we give the macrophages back again, the tumor is controlled, the negative tumor is controlled. So the job is, do, is done by the macrophages that infiltrate the tumor. So we are, we are talking about day 10 tumors, it's this size here, but day 17 tumors are resistant to that therapy. So day 10 tumors are well controlled, day 17 not. So here you see day 17 tumor are happily growing, there's some dip there and then it's coming up again despite of multiple treatments. So we were wondering what happens? Shall we make the CAR T cell more aggressive? A better killer, a super killer let's say. Yeah? And the super killer would mean we have a induction of a cytolytic cascade and the induction of being more cytolytic is controlled by two transcription factors. These are TBET and FOXO. And uh, by literature we know that TBET should be high and FOXO low to be a good effector killer cell. So we screened these, we screened these T cells by adding a panel of cytokines to influence the balance of FOXO on TBET in order to look for TBET high and FOXO low cells. So yes, when you start to read this figure, you see I1 alpha uh, somehow decreases TBET, a little bit increase in FOXO and so forth. You see IL-12 increases both, but we came up with IL-18 increases TBET and lowers FOXO1. And that's the same with IL-21. So that is what we wanted. Now, the idea is to make a better killer by providing IL-18 in order to increase Tibet and to lower FOXO. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Here we are. Increases Tibet and lowers FOXO. Same with IL-21. So, um, next step would be, and you can imagine that, engineer CAR T cell have an inducible cassette for that cytokine a IL-18 in this case, and that is induced here you see increasing number, increasing uh, alpha and gamma, cytolytic activity remains the same and that specific increasing IL-18, no, uh, increasing 18, no increase of 12, this is a 12 inducible, no 18 induced. So it's a specific one and it's uh, really induced by the antigen. So we repeated all the experiments I showed you for, with I-12, grow up the tumor, gave in the CAR T cell in a mixed tumor, and look how the mice survive, and that is the result at the end. And we have CAR T cells with 18, they survive, this bigger one, day 17 ones. They survive, whereas with I-12, these mice will die, and uh, with I-12 plus 18 is not better than 18 alone meaning that IL-18 is providing a better killer in this case. That is one aspect of IL-18, so I think Carl will talk about another aspect of IL-18, but that makes a, a situation better in this case of tumors, and what we do see in those tumors is a decrease in T-Rex cells and an increase in TH17 cells in those tumors that are controlled in the presence of IL-18. So there's a difference of IL-12 and 18 in the biology, you see it summarized here, and the persistence of CAR T cells is increased in the presence of IL-18. And having said that again, IL-18 is not constitutively expressed, it's only expressed upon signaling through the car, it's only released in the tumor lesion. There's no systemic effect of IL-18. It's very important to avoid any systemic effects 
in these animals. So that is the system having CAR T cells running against these cells, inducible cytokines or any other inducible products delivered through the lesion and uh, then modulating the immune response there. And we shortly say these are trucks. T cells redirected for antigen unrestricted cytokine initiated killing. Just remember, these are cars delivering a payload to a certain uh, lesion. So these are now called the fourth generation of CAR T cells. Well, let's think about what's going on in these lesions. And one of the hurdles is TGF beta. So there is a lot of TGF beta around. And some years ago, we, we found that CD28 zeta cyclinin makes these CAR T cells resistant to TGF beta, whereas 41BB cyclinin cars are sensitive to repression by TGF beta as, as are the zeta CAR T cells. That was published five, six, seven years ago. Now we were thinking, why is that the case? Why 28 and not 41BB, although we are in favor of 41BB for several reasons. So we dissected the C28 signaling by deletion of the LCK binding site and, uh, and other binding sites and we came up with the LCK binding site because that LCK activation drives the uh, production and release of I2. When we turn down that binding site, there is no I2 production. But alpha gamma is still there, amplification is still there, killing is still there. So, uh, and it's due to I2 because when we give it I2 back again, it works in the same way. So, what about that now uh, with respect to resistance to TGF beta? Here we see the wild type 28 resistant, delete LCK binding site, these are sensitive, delete the PI3 binding site. There's another binding site on 28, they are still resistant and delete both, they are sensitive. Meaning, obviously, LCK is involved in the resistance to a TGF beta. Because LCK is inducing, as I said, IL-2, we just added IL-2 to the construct by inducible cassette here again, and the cells are resistant again against TGF beta. So it's indeed IL-2 that converts to resistance. Now imagine, the CAR T cell is going in, seeing TGF beta, is happy to have IL-2, so being resistant. And the other cell next to the side is a T-Rex cell, and the T-Rex cell says, thank you for IL-2. So I will suppress you anyhow. So IL-2 is not a good idea to have IL-2 in the tumor lesion, not. So we thought, is there an alternative for IL-2 that can be replaced by another cytokine? And the answer is yes, indeed. You can take, instead of IL-2, another gamma cytokine like IL-7 or IL-15. And there are several reasons to take IL-7, not IL-15, to replace by IL-2. So, how do we go on? Now it's a 28 zeta car deletion in LCK, not producing IL-2, but an inducible cassette for IL-7, IL-7 coming up, binding to an artificial receptor here and giving a signal through the IL-2 receptor signaling. So does it work? Yes, of course. Here it is, 28 zeta, uh, 28 zeta with a deleted LCK, it's sensitive to the TGF beta. Now this CAR T cell produces IL-7, and the CAR T cell has an IL-7 receptor, but the IL-7 receptor is uh, reduced after sensing IL-7. So this CAR T cell produces IL-7, has an artificial receptor recognizing IL-7, and uh, giving the IL-2 receptor signaling. These CAR T cell is resistant to TGF beta. And that's due to IL-7 without that, and the receptor only does not work. So we need the release of IL-7, we need the receptor sensing, and we need the signaling here. And the cytolytic activity, indeed, is the same. So these cells are really resistant, 
and these tumors are controlled in the presence of TGF beta. So it works with this artificial loop. So we have here these three uh, generations of cars. You know that the trucks are now the fourth generation. You know all the others. And uh, this can be expanded having not only the release of a, a cytokine or any other product, you can add on an artificial receptor that synthesizes this one and gives a signal back to that cell. So um, that is my favorite summary here for a car T cell, yeah? <laughs> you are now an expert and you're saying, well, that's second generation car T cell, of course, yeah? <laughs> this is first generation of trucks and it works, you see, some improvement. That is our new institute in Regensburg here. We are moving to that building in, uh, in summer, I think. And we have already installed a car T cell there. <laughs> a, a little bit heavy, but it works, yeah? You see? And these are yeah, my co workers, collaborators, grand sponsors, and thank you so much. Thank you.